Well, hello everyone here, there, and everywhere. I'm your host, Stephanie Solomon, and welcome to Winning Ways with yours truly. I hope that you're making the best of this day and uh, that you had a great start and you're working to have a great end. Well, today I'm going to be teaching from my third book, Aging with Grace, yada, da. All right. And, um, I want to talk about in this video, just share a little bit about being safe in our relationships. And I ask the question, are your relationships a safe space? All right. Before I get into that, though, I do want to give a few shout outs because I am grateful and I want to acknowledge people who are supportive, people who are uh, tuning in consistently and letting me know how blessed they are. First, I want to give a shout out to Minister Donna Brown. Thank you so much for all the support. You always have words of encouragement for me and how you're uh, just pumping me up <laughs> with your words of encouragement. Sis, thank you so much, Miss Mary Kay. <laughs> And I want to thank Tracy Fallon Ogar. She has been consistent, especially when I was on the audio side. Hi, everybody. Thumbs up, a comment. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Um, she has been a great part of that listening only community. And she's followed me over to the audio and visual side. Thanks, Tracy. Anna Washington. Thank you so much, Anna. You always have a comment of positivity and I appreciate that. Michelle Yurick. Thank you, Michelle. My math colleague from Parkville Middle School. Thank you so much for how you've been blessed. And Cynthia Taylor, a dear cousin of mine, who's always positive and insightful and lets me know specifically about the topic and the content and how she's been blessed. So thank you. Thank you, all of you. And while I am on that, I do need to say, because I see people jumping on, and um, I want to say it would be so appreciated if you could comment, 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 whether you're on the YouTube side or the Facebook side. You know, I'm learning these algorithms respond to activity with the comments, also with uh likes and shares yes likes and shares and again if you're on the youtube side subscribing i would love for you to do that really trying to grow that community over there that's my main focus and so i would really love it if you would subscribe 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 <laughs> all right thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for all that you all do well, I'm going to jump right into things because I don't want to belabor this. All right. And I have my notes. That's why I'm looking down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We want to talk about safe spaces in our relationships. Um, not just is the relationship safe for us, but are we making relationships that people have with us safe as well? Sometimes we don't realize uh, the energy. I talked about the energy of words a few weeks ago. Sometimes we don't know. We are unaware what we put out. And remember, when we are becoming better, because that's what this, this podcast is all about. That's what I'm all about. Growing personally, spiritually, professionally, grow, grow, grow. Just, you know, that that's the way I am thing. Mm -mm. That's my horoscope. And that's what I'm putting in a box to. Mm -mm. Please don't come at me with that because I am not defined by that. And I sure hope that you as a maturing, maturing person aren't that way either. But if you choose to be, so be it. But over here, it's about evolving. That's why the name of my coaching service is called Evolve for Life. For the rest of our lives, we need to be evolving, becoming better individuals. All right. So when we talk about safe spaces, um, we're talking about making individuals feel at ease, comfortable, making them um, feel as though that they can be their true selves, they can be encouraged, as well as be uh, supported where they are. All right. And I've lost my page. Oh, here we are. You know, I'm coming from, okay, I'm going to stay here. All right. I did say I'm coming from third book here. All right. So here's just a little clip, little um, excerpt from that uh, chapter of it's actually parenting 101 called this and sub sub chapter is the safety net. Safety becomes an issue whenever trust has been broken. And then it's another little piece that I want to read. It is okay to want to be and feel safe in 
any relationship, whether it's the relationship with your employer, relationship with colleagues, relationships with your children, relationship with your, your, your neighbors, relationships with your parents, relationship with siblings, relatives, you know, whomever. You want to feel safe, you know, and we all have a right. We do. We have a right to be safe. Now, when I say safe spaces, most people will probably think of a locale, an environment. Well, we ought to have environments where we are safe, but we can also, safe spaces also means People. People can be a safe space. All right. So let's talk about people since we're dealing with relationships. There are individuals who are in the Bible who I see reflect their security with another person that they felt safe with them. One uh, relationship that I admire is the relationship between Elizabeth and Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Um, when Mary went to Elizabeth, read the scriptures, read it off. You get to get to get context. I'm not going to go too much into context for the sake of time, but read it for context. I believe that Mary, of all the people that she knew, her fiance Joseph, her parents, relatives, in her, in the town that she lived, she went to a cousin in an, another town. Specifically, this cousin, it's where she went to to be, to lay her head, to rest, to talk, to feel safe. And everyone deserves that person or people. You can have more than one. There's a term, there's a what saying now, you're my person. And some people use it uh, romantically, but it's not just um, for romantic um, um suggestion all right okay it's, it's it's for any relationship for lack of words another relationship i want to quickly look at is jonathan and david as you read there about their relationship you can see how secure they were with sharing uh information that was you know of aspects of their life um another one that i admire another relationship is between ruth and naomi uh, they were from different uh, upbringings, different faiths. And what they had in common is that Ruth was married to Naomi's son. Uh, the son died. Uh, Naomi had two sons and she had two daughter-in-laws. And, at the, and the, Naomi's husband had, was deceased as well. And so nonetheless, to make a long story short, Ruth decided to stay with Naomi as opposed to going back to her native land uh, to, I guess, be more comfortable with people she knew, a culture that she knew. She decided her, her sister-in-law went back, but she did not. Uh, she stayed with Naomi. So this was a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. And you know how society has a negative stereotype on that relationship. Um, doesn't mean it's true in every case, but here's a case where you can see that there was a level of liking and respect for one another. The fact that Naomi would identify with, I'm sorry, Ruth would identify with Naomi to follow her, to want to be under her. Such respect and love. And Naomi, I believe, respected Ruth as well. I mean, she helped, she gave her advice of how to even get another man, how to put herself in position, <laughs> you know, but read the stories for more context. There was safety to me exemplified as I read the text around these individuals. They felt safe with one another. One another. They took care of each other. They protected the heart of the other person. And that's what a safety net looks like in our world. And I believe everyone should have someone who they can trust to help them, teach them show them how to guard their heart and do their best to protect their heart. And it's reciprocated. I believe that um, people who help us guard our heart and encourage us in such a way and we feel comfortable that we can let our hair down and not be judged, they basically have such respect for, for our purpose. They have respect for our purpose. They have respect for our gifts as well. People want to see you grow. They really do. 
I didn't bring my glasses. Oh my goodness. No wonder I'm having a hard time here. Okay. And I'm not getting up. Okay. I'm going to go for it now. <laughs> okay. I believe that you ought to, some people will say, well, you, you have to be careful with that because everyone who may make us feel safe doesn't really have our best interest. That's true. We know that the enemies of this world pervert everything that God intends for us, right? There are people who will do whatever, manipulate, seduce, whatever, to make us feel safe. And really that's to, they have another agenda, a false agenda. I do believe that. But the Lord tells us to be wise as what? Serpents and yet harmless as a dove. Amen. So let's let's move in the vein that you are fortunate. You are blessed uh, to have someone in your life who has your best interest. I put a poll out earlier. Some people responded to it. And I want to thank uh, Robin who responded. And she said, and I asked what this, you know, give me a word or so that you think expresses the safe space. And Robin said integrity. You know, she says that a person has to have integrity and you should, you should, you have to be trusted. I totally agree. Claudia also gave a response. And um, let's see, what did Claudia say? She said non-judgmental. Claudia, you must have read my notes. <laughs> you must have read my notes. There you go. You were the first person to, oh, thank you, darling. Thank you. Oh my goodness, to teach you that. Oh, thank you, dear. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not an expert, as I said earlier, but I'm going to give you some nuggets that I've learned along the way that makes you aware if the relationship that you have is genuine, authentically safe, really. And trust me, I've had multiple conversations with individuals who feel so, they feel terrible because they don't feel safe within relationships that they believe they should feel safe in. And that's family. You know, I've talked about this a million times and I'll continue to talk about it. Family is not always a safe place. It should be, but it's not. All right. Family should be loving. All right. But not everyone is. And loving people doesn't mean that you trust people. Remember, nowhere in scripture, we're told to love people, but we're not told to trust people. Totally two different things. And um, there are different ways to show love. And uh, sometimes people have, and I don't want to get off on a tangent with this, but there are different ways to show love. And sometimes people judge us by the way that we love. And it's not the way that they have in their mind that we should love, if that makes any sense. And so... Loving doesn't necessarily mean uh, your version of it, that it's a safe space for me because I can love you and I may be loving you in a way, but I don't feel safe with you. I can love the stranger on the street who I give uh, money to, you know, who I roll my window, to, but I'm going to still be watchful. You know, the Bible says watch as well as pray. I'm going to be vigilant. I'm going to um be wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. Yes, Renetta, absolutely. So I can love you and not trust you. And I talked about this before too. I can forgive you and not trust you. We're told to love, we're told to forgive. We're never told to trust people. Throughout scripture from beginning to end, we're told to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. All right. Don't want to go there too deep because I will go off and never get to this. <laughs> so let's look at some aspects of being responsible in a uh, relationship, making others feel safe as well. Sometimes we just want to look at what others are doing for us, but are we reciprocating? I've talked about reciprocity. Are we, we want, but are we also giving? Are we reciprocating. Well, in a relation, relationship where there is safety, you are provided pure comfort. Not just comfort, pure comfort. There is no agenda. There's no lack. 
you are comfortable. If you have to feel um, nervous and get your something, I know what it's like to be around people and my stomach. I may look calm on the outside, but my stomach is doing somersaults because this environment, these individuals, I am not feeling safe with. No, they don't have neck. They don't have knives out. They don't have arrows. They don't have bullets and guns that I can see. But their energy is hostile. Their energy is negative and uncaring and unloving. And why would I give my heart? Why would I open myself up to individuals who don't have my best interests? So you want to be in environments where you are genuinely comf comfortable. All right. You want to be um, as you want to make others feel safe. All right. And you want to make sure that others help you become safe, but not being judgmental. I believe it was uh, Claudia who said that. She said being non-judgmental, non I'm sorry, is uh, the thing that she believes. All right. Being non-judgmental non is helping her to realize that this is a safe space. This is a safe space. All right. The next one is you're a good listener. You're not so busy trying to even fix the person. You just want to hear them out. We don't always have to have a solution because the truth is we don't know. Only one knows everything. That's the Lord. So we always take things to him. But God does give us Elizabeth's and Jonathan's and Naomi's in our life, you know, so that we can have that physical comfort through a human being. So you want to be a good listener. Say is the time and a place for everything. Sometimes it's best to say nothing and listen and let the Lord speak to you if it's something to say, you know, to say to that person. The next thing is to be present. When I say be present, oftentimes people are physically there, but they're not emotionally connecting. They are not really tuned in to that person and that person's uh, condition. So you want to be non-judgmental. You want to be a great listener. You want to make a person feel comfortable. You want to seek wisdom in all things, because when you do speak, you don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't know about you, but it's a very uncomfortable, awkward feeling to come out incorrect to someone. And you can just sense that you said the wrong thing. And when a person needs, I know when I need to be in a safe space because I feel that there's no one who understands me, the last thing I need is for someone to not listen and to just speak off the top of their head without any wisdom. You know, what they're saying doesn't make any sense. And you know it doesn't make any sense. That's why it's just best to be quiet. Same thing at funerals. I just believe in the gift of presence. You know, it. what can you say? You know, and I'm not one of those people who just want to just repeat things that people say out of tradition. Sometimes it's best just to hold a person, give them a hug. Just let them know that you're there. You know? Sometimes wisdom does not speak. Wisdom waits and wisdom listens. I'm going to come right back with two more aspects of being a safe place for somebody. Hey, Scholar, whose book are you reading now? I'm enjoying a great reading by Stephanie Solomon. Her conversational writing style, disciple-centric themes, and liberal approach to topics is such a blessing to me. She's so on point. Wow, she sounds like someone I want to hear, and her book's like something I need to share with my book club. You know her books are accessible through all electronic mediums and at the brick-and-mortar booksellers, and you can hear her on her weekly blog talk radio show. I take it she's on Twitter and other social networks? Yes, and she's funny, too. Sounds like the author and her books have great personality. I'll be getting my copies today. Well, the next thing here of being um, a safe space for someone is being a confidant. You know, taking, I think it was Robin who said, be, being trustworthy and having integrity. Yeah, when someone shares intimate things with you or things that um, you may have shared with someone else, but someone else mocks it, scoffs it, 
you know, is irresponsible with what you shared, you poured your heart out and a person is irresponsible with that information, that's not a safe space. And sometimes we goof up, we mess up and it takes a while to earn that trust back again. I've talked about this before. Trust is earned. It's just not a given. It's earned. And I know what it's like for someone to believe that they can say something uh, to me and I've been flippant. You, that's hard to win a person back. It really is. And I know what it's like to have done, have given of myself to individuals and given information. I'm like, oh, that will never happen again. <laughs> that will never happen again. So we want to be wise with and responsible. That's the other thing. We want to be responsible with what people say to us, you know, and how do we be responsible? We hold what they share in confidence, you know, learn to be the keeper of some secrets. Trust me, I know I am a lot. <laughs> and um, I know that there are some people who have gone to their grave with my secrets, you know, um, learn to honor that. And the last thing you're talking about honor, learn to honor the relationship. Honor the fact that the Lord has been so kind, so gracious to you, to, to, to us, to even give us a human being and a human being who has the character of him. Yep, the character of him who will listen, love on you through comfort and care, those things that I've mentioned by listening, all of those uh, represent compassion, all right? Those are attributes of our Father. So honor those relationships because everyone, everyone doesn't have that. And when you get it, be thankful for that. And that's all I have for you tonight. And I hope that that blessed you in some way. And make sure you go back and, and rethink some things and maybe ask the Lord for a relationship as such. All right. Well, if you want to have a one on one uh, session with me on forgiveness, on family relationships, on personal development, I am available at Evolve for Life. That is the name of uh, my service. And it's at www.stephanieersolomon.com. And you can simply log on there and set up an appointment. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm really trying to make these shorter. <laughs> and thank you for all of your shout out to you, Miss Renetta Gaines. <laughs> Thank you so much for your participation today. All right, folks, have a wonderful, wonderful week. All right. And be mindful, be safe. All right. With others, you know, handle people with care. Yes, yes. Handle people with care. Take care, folks. Until the next time. For more videos like the one that you've just watched, check out this one.